All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm Damon Cook. I'm a developer advocate at WP Engine with the developer relations team and also a part-time sponsored contributor to um, WordPress, mostly testing these days, testing out, for example, the features that I'm going to show you today, testing them out, verifying that they're working and verifying like the documentation makes sense because a lot of these are getting written up in dev notes as we speak um, in preparation for the release. Um, yeah, let's see. WordPress 6.4 due to be released November 7th. This is the third major release of 2023 and also the short one, the one with the shortest timeline. So, um, probably some, well, probably, a, probably just as much work put into it, but, uh, just a shorter timeline to turn around on some of the features. Um, uh, it's mostly this 6.4 release is mostly focused on the phase two, which is site editor block editor, um, enhancements and refinement as opposed to um, the phase three, which if you're familiar with these, these phases that the, the Gutenberg project is kind of focused on, um, phase three being kind of collaboration features, which there was some work done, but nothing to really highlight in this release. It's mostly foundational work going ahead uh, for, the, yeah, for the future and lots of conversation and planning for what that's gonna look like. Um, 6.4 uh, covers six these following uh, Gutenberg releases. So it's 16.2 to 16.7 are all included in 6.4. Um, and I have some links here. Again, I'll back scroll here, but these slides are available on, it's colorfultones.com and you can just click to get to it. There's not too many slides. Um, I've been, Presenting on 6.4 recently at a couple of WordCamps, and it's worth noting that some items have been punted to the 6.5 release um, just because they weren't ready for 6.4 close, but not ready. Um, and those items include the font library, which was a pretty large feature that um, it's really close, but again, they just wanted to get some more uh, time to work on some more enhancements and make sure it's ready. Um, some new blocks that were considered um, time to read, table of contents and scrolling marquee. Um, those were all pushed to 6.5. Um, the public interactivity API. So the interactivity API, which we'll kind of touch on as I go through a demo in a minute on 6.4 features. Um, it was merged, it, but it's not really publicly um, usable at this point. And I think the idea being that 6.5, they'll, they'll have some more functionality that um, developers and other uh, extenders can use. Revisions to template and template parts and post formats for block themes. Um, I don't know how many people remember using post formats, but <laughs> potentially it might have a comeback. Um, but again, these all these num odd numbers here are linked to uh, tickets. So you can read up and if you're curious to dig in on some of these items of where they, they are at, I always encourage that um, and leave feedback on what you think uh, might be helpful around any of these features. Um, actually, I'm not going to go at this point. I'll pause for a second, but I'm going to kind of go into a demo site and start um, just so sh walking through a majority of the features that 6.4 highlights. Uh, looks like there's no questions in the chat right now, so I'll just keep going. All right, so here I am, um, I have a local site in uh, local that I set up and I have the beta tester plugin installed. Um, and I am running the 6.4, move the zoom bar. 
you can probably see down here at the bottom in small, uh, 6.4 release candidate one. Um, so that's what I'm running for installation. I have the latest Gutenberg plugin activated. And then of course, when you install 6.4, there's a new default theme, 2024. So that is also installed and activated, which I'll be showing. Um, 2024, the new default theme, um, whereas in the past, they focused a lot of default themes around kind of a centralized topic or niche. This one kind of covers um, a few different ones. Um, intentionally, they wanted to cover different few niches um, and they're leveraging full page patterns to address these niches. So it's kind of the idea is there's writers, artists and you know photographers so there's like a por portfolio page um and for writing there's kind of a blog role layout um and then the other one is businesses um which i believe there's also another full page layout available but this is kind of what you get if you activated 6.4 today with the 2024 theme this is essentially what you would see um, these are a series of uh, block patterns that were assembled as part of the theme and included. So this is the kind of ho default homepage experience. Uh, these are, of course, latest blog posts, which I actually added a bunch of placeholder content. So we had some demo content today. Um, then a little subscriber CTA here, which is included in a pattern and a footer pattern as well. Um, so yeah, that's the the homepage for 2024, and I'll um, I'll show some other features as I get going here. Um, but since when activating 2024, it does actually take um, over the homepage with a the home template. So if you're familiar with the home, the template hierarchy. Um, this is, yeah, it's taking over the blog home. So if a lot of users might want to, should they choose to use 2024 for their sites, um, create a blog, like a typical blog role page. Um, so I'm just going to show how you would do that. Um, if we go into the, right now I'm in the full site editor and I'm going to actually leave the site editor. This is what I wanted. If we create a new page in outside of the full site editor, um, this is the intended workflow is going for. So I'm sorry about that. Um, this is the pattern inserter, which recommends some full page layouts for us since we chose to create a new page and it populated a little slower because I do have a actual like a debug flag set on my local. So it does look a little clunky. I apologize for that. Um, but these are the full page pattern layouts that 2024 gives. Um, so again, you know, portfolio, there's some options here an about page, a portfolio overview, um, some R an RSVP. And, you know, variations on some of these, a port another portfolio here. Um, so I am gonna choose and just give it a title and this populates with that pattern already so we have a little quote at the top here and then like a query loop block which is showing uh latest posts and the sidebar populated with a bunch of um, other blocks but i'm going to go ahead and publish that and then we can open that up and see what that's like so this would be kind of the writing niche. Um, and this is the, the template for that. And again, these posts I, I pre-populated just to give us something to, to have to play with today. Um, but one of the new features from WordPress 6.4, since this is the query loop block, um, is the ability to activate enhanced pagination for the query loop block. So if we go in here and select the query loop block in the sidebar, 
hopefully the uh, this text is large enough. I tried to enlarge for you folks. So let me know if it's too small. But um, so I have the query loop block highlighted over here. And if I scroll down in the settings on the right sidebar here and enable this enhanced pagination, um, that will give us um, that will allow users to basically the good old days of Ajax pagination. It's kind of, you know, without the screen refresh, um, it just kicks us up to the top of the page. Um, so you can paginate. Uh, and if you're, if you see up at the top here, it's just giving some additional query parameters and the links. Um, So that just is a nice feature for the query loop lock. And if we go back in and continue editing the query loop lock, um, there's also the pagination here. If we drill down to the pagination, this number of links in the page number block, which is Part of the pagination you can now also set how many numbers you want to have in there so just the mid it's called the mid level um so that's just a nice little enhancement for the the page number block so you can save that and open that again in a new tab and that just shows a few less numbers um, for our pagination um the let's see what's next uh the navigation block so if we hop into the site editor and go to our navigation we now the navigation block now allows nesting of button blocks so um should we decide we want to add maybe a call to action here we could say um contact me um i'll just put a hash for the link for now and then if we select this and change it oh, sorry yeah select this and then change it to button then we have that available in our navigation so i can save that and I'll just come back over here and refresh this page. And now we have a contact me button. So yeah, so that's a nice little feature allowing the button block to be nested within, within navigation. Um, let's see, what else? The group block, that is that got a great deal of um, attention for this release. So I'm gonna exit out of here and we will create a new page actually no i'm going to use an existing page i think i have yeah no we'll create a new page <laughs> and exit out of this modal we'll just call it experiments and we're going to go ahead and add the group block. And we're going to set it to, um, we're going to use a row for now. And I'm going to make this full width. And one of the things that the group block now has is the ability to add a background image. So I'm going to go ahead and assign a background image. And we're going to go ahead and set a min height so we can really kind of experience that since we don't have any content yet. Set that to 50. Um, and now, the, so the background image support is pretty simplistic right now. There is discussions about extending it to be similar to the cover block. The cover block has a lot more features of positioning the um, background image and the scale of the background image. Um, but right now, this is a pretty simplistic uh, implementation, but it's a great feature to have because they're kind of different use cases. You can use the cover block for one thing and the group block for many other things. 
Um, so that's the background image on group blocks. Um, and then if we go ahead and add some, let's add a heading. And I'm gonna change the color here so we can actually see. There we go, and we'll set some padding. Oh, that's on the wrong, there we go. Uh, increase the padding here. Um, one of the new features that themes have to opt into, it's not really enabled by default, the theme has to opt in, but the 2024 theme has this enabled is there is a vertical orientation that you can utilize now. So text orientation here, if we enable that and then come over here, then we can switch the orientation of the text. Um, so this is kind of a, a design enhancement. Um, I think there is further uh, explorations being done around, um, around this and how it affects um, different uh, left to right, right to left languages. Um, but this is a really neat enhancement. Uh, and then also for group blocks, we can rename them. So if we click on the list view and choose rename, I could call this whatever I want that I gives information for organization, my custom background uh, group, terrible name, don't. <laughs> um, and then yeah, and saving that it applies here. And then you can also run the sidebar here, control the naming as well. So um, this will sync with whatever's over here. So if we rename this, uh, my new name, that saves. And then if you want to remove the renaming, you just, it's essentially just deleting it and save. And now it reverts to what it was, a row. Um, so that's a nice way to keep, if you, especially if you have a lot of group, groups of blocks that are using the group block in list view, um, it comes in really handy to be able to rename those. Um, another feature, I'm gonna actually, Put that back to horizontal um, with the group block is the ability to scope the styles for nested um, elements so right now i have the group block selected and i came over to the styles panel and if i went to colors and toggled here and now you can see i can set you know all these different elements that are that might be nested within my group block to have um, very specific explicit styling. So once I enable button, for example, let's go ahead and add a button. So this is getting the default 2024 styling right now. But if I go back to the row and, oh, I don't think I saved that. Yeah, so let enable the button again, and now we can set some custom styles. We could say we want the background to be red in this group for buttons. Um, and yeah. I'll leave the text alone because it probably wouldn't look good if I modified anything beyond that. Um, but all those elements are available now on the group block, so you can uh, really get some refined uh, styling controls. Just checking, taking a second, check my playbook here, make sure I'm not missing anything as I go along. Group block. All right. Make sure we don't have any questions in the chat. Okay. Um, the next item I'm gonna show, I'm actually gonna save this. And we'll just keep creating on this page, actually. Um, I'm going to insert a gallery block. And we'll just grab some images here. And insert our gallery. Um, 
Another nice new feature is for image blocks, and this applies to the gallery block, is it's kind of small to see, but these uh, there's preview thumbnails available in list view now. So you can kind of see it reinforces what you have um, in the main area of the editor, but it's a nice uh, visual reinforcement. And again, should you nest it in a group, you could rename it. So it's just kind of a nice um, organization feature. And then you can, of course, uh, reposition any of these. That's not anything new, but just wanted to show that. Um, so that applies, the preview thumbnail applies to the image block, which is also obviously nested within a gallery, but you can also, I could drag this out and just place it up here and it still has the uh, preview available as well. Um, but, um, what else? Let's see. Now I think it's, yeah, I'm gonna remove this. I think I wanna create a, pattern and show some um, different features that we can encounter along the way. I'm going to stick with this layout and I'm going to remove my buttons for now. And we're going to do some odd ex stylistic experimentation here. <laughs> Bear with me. We're going to add, um, let's see, image. And I'm going to just add some images in here set maybe an aspect ratio. I'm going to adjust this and I'm going to say, let's make this medium. I don't want that so big. And then I'm going to make this align to the right. Maybe give it duo tone filter. And I'm going to add another image. And so this actually is one of the nice features for pattern creators, which quite often you are creating your patterns in the editor and then uh, typically going over to the, the code editor, copying this and putting it in your pattern file. Um, but to go back to the visual editor, um, there's now the aspect ratio can be assigned for the placeholder. So if you don't actually want to attach images to your patterns, um, you can just say, you know, maybe I want this to be wide. Um, so when a user does come along and assign an image, when they insert this pattern, then it'll maintain this aspect ratio, um, which is really handy, handy for theme and pattern creators. But I'm going to go ahead and actually insert another image. And we're going to say, well, I'll leave it the, to that aspect ratio and reduce it to medium and stick with our duotone effect. Um, should we choose to save this as a pattern, which I will do right now, create pattern, um, we can give a custom name. I'm going to say experiment number one. And this is a new feature here of 6.4 is you can create custom categories. So I'm going to file this under a new, oh, I guess I had created this earlier, but there's nothing actually nested under it. We'll call it experimental patterns. And I'm going to make sure this is an unsynced pattern because I don't want it to be synced. And we can say create and it'll be saved. So if I remove this now, uh, we'll just save that for now and leave here and go into our site editor. And um, as of 6.4, the pattern, the pattern categories have been refined a little bit. So, um, the synced and unsynced patterns used to have their own categories, but they're now merged, which I think makes sense because um, you, but the, really the idea is this lock helps show kind of the syncing versus non-syncing. Um, if you look over here on the right, a lot of these came from the 2024 theme um, and they can't be edited. Um, 
but my experimental pattern in this new custom category was saved over here. So um, that's a new 6.4 feature of creating custom categories and for patterns, as well as being able to export your patterns. So we could save this to our local um, machine and share it or upload it to a different site. I'm just going to save that to show it. Um, so yeah, exporting and importing patterns is a new feature. Uh, they're saved as JSON files. That's a new feature for 6.4 as well. Let's see. So we're going to exit there. And I'm just going to check off my list here and make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, to go back into some of the block enhancements, I'm going to go back to my experiments page. Um, the list block got some small kind of quality of life. Well, it's actually the list block, the quote block, and the navigation block, but I think it's um, easier to see with the list block. If we add some items here, I'm just going to use my Alfred um, Mac OS app to get some lorem ipsum for us to work with real quick. Uh, and then we can, let's say, nest that one in. Um, but one of the improvements, it's a quality of life thing, but prior to 6.4, should I choose to edit this list item and let me open the list view so you can kind of see it's always helpful I think to see how these are nested but prior to 6.4 should I choose this nested item usually the tool this toolbar would come down here right above this item but that proves problematic should I then want to go and edit this one because um, then it interferes with editing flow so now the toolbar is pinned to the top of the uh, parent block, so the, it'll always persist at the top, um, which is just a small quality of life <laughs> editor enhancement. Um, and then it's also as far as lists, if you tend to, you know, if you actually go ahead and create another list, um, we'll see, let's add some more items. Um, and then, so now we have two separate list blocks and oftentimes you, you're like, oh, well, I kind of actually just wanted those to be the same list. Um, if you backspace previously, it, I don't remember what it did, but it didn't do anything helpful, <laughs> but now, you know, it merges the lists, which makes more sense. Um, so that's a new enhancement for 6.4 for the lists. Um, let's see, what else? Um, the command palette, I'd be curious um, how many folks are using the command palette today, but there has been some um, enhancements to the command palette. So let's see, I'm gonna escape and we forget option K, we can launch the command palette and there has been some design improvements just shadow and you know refinement around the visual of this uh, command palette but there's also been some commands added for 6.4 so since i have that list item selected um, let's see we can do uh, duplicate we could duplicate that item and inserts it right there in the editor. Uh, again, I can launch, um, let's see, escape. Um, now I could say move and I could move this up and hit enter. And now that duplicated item got moved up in the list. Um, what else? Duplicate, add before. Yeah, so if we want to add, um, an item after that list item, we could say add after. Actually, I don't think that'll work on the nested block. So we actually have to select the, yeah. 
the parent block and say add after. And that's just kind of a shortcut to, to start inserting new blocks. You can say add after or add before. So again, some more quality of life 6.4 enhancements just to, to get editors quickly around the screen and adding and removing blocks and duplicating items. You can also duplicate items in list view. So I'm just going to add some content here to our paragraph. And we can say, is it, it's uh, option shift K on a Mac or option shift D on a Mac. So you can just duplicate these items in list view, select one and start duplicating them. Um, again, then you can select all, if you shift click, um, all these items in the side in the list view, then you can select them all and Previously, once you select all, usually a, a typical keyboard shortcut is escape to deselect all, um, but that was not working in list view, but that was fixed for 6.4. So that's just a little quality of life enhancement. So if we select all and hit delete, we can get rid of all those. So again, that was kind of fast, but these little shortcuts in keyboard, um, operability these are the things that really kind of make the, the everyday uh, writing experience better and these were added for 6.4 so that was kind of the list block and also this list view in the side uh, some of the enhancements there another new feature we can let's add a image image block just going to grab an image from our library. Uh, 6.4 now offers a lightbox functionality. So here I have my image selected, the image block, and over on the side we find this new feature, expand on click. You can toggle that on, and we'll go ahead and save this and open it in a new tab. And now when a user hovers, you can click and it expands in an, in an overlay light box. And you can use escape or uh, click it again to uh, unenlarge it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the light box feature. And that is that that can be set on again the gallery and image blocks. Um, Whereas in the gallery block, let's go ahead and add after and show that real quick. Grab some images, insert the gallery, and then, yeah, you can go through each image in, in a gallery and exp, uh, expand on click. Um, whereas there isn't an option for the gallery itself, it's just on each image. I will save that, but before I do, I'll note that I did not actually expand on click for this gallery yet, because I want to show how you can opt into this through global styles as well. So I save that. Let's refresh our final page. Uh, the top item has the expand to click and then the gallery. Oh, I didn't set it. I wonder if I Maybe I left it on before this uh, workshop. I apologize. Let's go find out. Um, but you can opt in globally. If we go into global styles, we'll open up the site editor, click over here, and then get into global styles. And if we go to our blocks area, we can search image, select our image. Um, I'm not sure why that gallery was getting the expand on click when I didn't opt into it. That's odd. But in theory, this would globally enable the theme and all images. So if we let's go to another, let's go to our original homepage that 2024 gave us. Now, like every image in this pattern, has the light box enabled. So that's kind of a way to opt in at a global level. Um, 
Whereas if you, but you can still go into each individual image and toggle it on and off and it would respect that setting on a per block per image basis as well. So uh, that's the light box. Um, I'll pause, let's see. It looks like there might be a question. Will this new version play nice with ACF and bricks? Uh, I'm not sure uh, bricks. I think that's, I'm not sure what bricks is. I think that's what a uh, plugin or uh, yeah, I'm not sure what bricks is, but I can speak to ACF. Um, I've been doing quite a bit of testing with ACF and um, it seems to work fine. Um, the only features that <clears throat> have some kind of overlap with ACF features are uh, the options page performance improvements, which I believe the, the team is looking at for ACF, um, but I don't expect there's going to be any uh, side effects there. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, it should work great with ACF. There's nothing, uh, no concerns on my side. Uh, Bricks is a developer friendly page builder. Yeah, I can't speak to, to Bricks. I would probably reach out to the developers um, of Bricks to see if they've been to testing compatibility for 6.4, but I can't speak to that, honestly. Um, good question, though. If anybody else has been testing, feel free to, to drop your answer if you use Bricks Builder. Um, Okay, so a few other items I'll touch on here. We hop back into, I wanna go back into a page here. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a columns block. And just set it to two, we'll add some content here. Um, and I like to always, I always have list view open. I love list view. It helps <laughs> so much visualize the hierarchy here. I'll add another paragraph, 56 words. All right. Um, but the columns block now also has, um, sorry, let me reset this to full width. And then if we look at the column, we have the stretch to fill now. This is a new 6.4 feature. So you can set each column, I guess. Uh, yeah, the, probably the text isn't the best example of that, but let's check out on the front end and make sure that it's a one-to-one. -one. I think that, let's see. Probably want to add image. And we're going to set it to tall. So this is kind of uh, stretching the image. Um, and then if you also I mean, I had responsive view turned off. We can turn that off and inspect these. Here's column one and column two gets the same height because they're stretching the content there. So that's a kind of a nice new feature for the columns block. Kind of a way to get the equal height columns going. Although that was not the best design <laughs> possibility that I just built. I apologize. Um, that is really the heart of kind of the UI and editor changes that I can show. I, I'm also going to show kind of some developer focused, um, <clears throat> features as well. I'm going to jump into code in a second here. Then let me just get a drink of water and see if there's any questions. Is there a way, an easy way to align buttons in multiple columns? Um, 
I'm trying to imagine what I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure that I understand the question, I guess. Let's see. Let me start building something and see if we can. Could you use global styles for buttons to do that? Well, I mean, hmm. Yeah, I guess I, I would have to see the kind of like a layout that you're trying to accomplish, I think, to visualize that for myself. I mean, one feature that I will be that will potentially could potentially be useful for that scenario that I'm hearing I'll be going over in code momentarily is um, in the theme.json, you can now uh, disable Actually, that's not the, the right code, but and I'm actually, actually going to show. Let's see. Let's hop back to our themes. I started creating a child theme of 2024 for this demo, and I'll show the code now. So here is our uh, themes directory. We have the 2024 theme, and then I have the TT4 child, I called it. And it's just a style declaring 2024 as the parent and then we have a theme.json which is uh, pretty simplistic um, but a new feature we can say uh, for any blocks we can disable layout um, one thing to note i overlooked this the first time i tested it is this is affects the the sidebar uh, styles for layout. So in this example, I'm saying for the core, the group block, I want to disable the layout settings. So you may have already, well, actually, I didn't have the child theme enabled, so you wouldn't have noticed that. But now we have the child theme enabled. And if I come back to experiments, I think I had a group. Yeah, we had a group block in here somewhere. Uh, nope. I'll insert one. Um, so this does not affect this setting here, the align. This is a line and not we're talking layouts. But if you come over here, um, the layout options are no longer available. So we'll say wide width, set that. Um, and we'll actually just add a paragraph and then I'll show this toggle on and off. So we can enable that. And then on the group block, um, you still have these options to change the transforms in position. Um, and then, so if we take this out, save that, and we'll come back in. And now we can see like the layout options for the group. So it's really just the effects of these layout options in the sidebar over here. So that's one way to kind of refine what you want your end editors to have control over um, in the editor. I'll go ahead and add that back in for now and then as far as the the vertical orientation of text again like i said that's an opt-in for themes and so since 2024 op is opting in this is the should i create a child theme and want to opt out um that's this is how i would do so it's the typography writing mode and you just it's a boolean so it's true or false um so i would just state that the false and then in theory, since, well, since I already had that saved, we can probably just see that in action right now. Yep, so now there's no, there's no text orientation option over here under tools for typography. So that disabled it. So those are kind of two features for theme editors or block extenders. Um, Another one, which is pretty exciting, is block hooks. 
And before I get into that, I want to hop back over to my slides because <clears throat> this one takes a little more explaining. Block hooks um, really are for block extenders. And it's a means to, in your block.json, which is um, typically the file that you have to define all blocks that Core uses to define all blocks as the standard divine, to define your WordPress blocks. Um, you can include this block hooks entry, and then you can target existing blocks. So here we're targeting um, core verse block, and then we can give different um, attributes or properties that we want to assign. So we're going to target the core verse block, and we're going to insert our block that this block.json file is for. We're going to say insert it before, or you can say after, like here's all the examples here. You can say after, or you can say first child and last child. And the first child and last child are for parent blocks. So again, this example here, like a column block, um, which has a parent columns block, you could say, let's hook onto the column block and insert our block as before as a first child in that hierarchy. Um, so this is handy for block extenders. Maybe if you're creating like a custom block and want to insert it in certain areas. One thing to keep in mind that this only affects templates, template parts, and patterns that haven't been customized by the user, which is really intentional because we want to respect a user's choices to customize those areas. And should they enable, which I'll show. Um, so here I have a simple plugin that uses block hooks. And I want to show, let's see, I'm going to open up, sorry, I'm going to add some more tabs here. I have a post with a comment on it, and I'm going to open that up in a tab and just show, um, kind of show our comments area, because I'm going to enable this new plugin, which uses block hooks. And then we'll come back over here and refresh. And as we can see, we get a like button um, added to the comments area. And to go back and look at the code for this. Uh, build, yeah. So this is the block JSON file uh, for the like button. And oh, I think this is a, hmm. oh, yeah, I think I have an older version in my <clears throat> uh, install here. Cause so I'm missing, let's see, I wonder if, why am I missing the, oh, it's right here. <laughs> it's right in front of me. I apologize. Block hooks. Um, yeah, so here's where it's declaring the block hook. And then it's saying it's targeting the core template template, comment template and saying append this as the last child. So that's why it's showing up here. Um, but if I were a user and came in to modify this template, um, and I'm going to open up list view again. We want to drill down to our comments. So let's see, let's just get an item in here. And we want to, the, since it's targeting the common template, um, we get this little bit of UI here for our block hook, uh, blocks that are block hooked. <laughs> um, so we can disable this and turn that off and save it and then it would never apply again. Um, and to go back to what I said before that if a user had come in here and say, modified this template, maybe like they wanted that block above that block so we can drag and drop things around. Maybe, you know, this is a bad example, but maybe they came in here and mo moved some things around and saved. Uh, now this template is modified and should they activate that plugin, it would not inject that block hooked uh, block into that template. 
because it would respect their choices. They've customized it. Um, but should they come back later on and realize that you know it is available, they could opt into it at that point as well. So really, the the use cases kind of have yet to be explored. That was just one example. And I think this is the early iteration for block hooks, but I think it has a lot of great potential. I know there's already explorations around refining how explicit you can target your hooks. So if you want to say um, only maybe the if the only navigation links that are in a header template, you know, you can do stuff like that and be a little more explicit. Whereas, you know, this is kind of um, broad in its current implementation um, when you hook something. So there's a lot, there's some definitely some areas still to be explored, but this, I think they're rolling this into 6.4 to see how people are using it and get feedback early on how, where this might go. Um, but that's block hooks. I'm seeing some, it looks like there might've been some questions I missed. Could you use global stat now? If the stretch, if the stretch is setting the column to the same height using flex, you should be able to set the button as the last element in the column with its margin top set to auto. Yeah. Yep. That's, I think he's, Neil, you're, yeah, you're speaking to maybe Jared's question about uh, multiple lining buttons and multiple columns. Mm -mm. I, oh, okay. That's really, uh, yeah, that's all I have today. I'm trying to think, make, make sure I, uh, yeah, they're always looking for additional testing. Um, again, these slides are available at colorfultones.com, but there's some links here to, um, how to get set up for testing, where to provide feedback, and um, they're, yeah, they're test early and often. And hopefully, uh, if any of you folks uh, create custom themes or plugins, you'll want to probably test with 6.4 and just make sure everything works. Um, that's all I have. Is there any questions? <laughs>